you're going on a mission trip to Italy. Uh, yeah, right, a mission trip to Italy. When you go to a third world country, oh yes, there's culture shock, and you need to be prepared for that. Don't think that you're some weirdo for being frightened or having anxiety about what you don't know, because that's how we are. We're human. Just know that if God wants you to go, He'll get you there. Thank you for joining Mercy Today. How do mercy and compassion break down barriers and change everything? How do they bring hope? Be inspired as our guests share about the life-changing, soul-impacting work through the ministry of Mercy, Inc. and its partners. Here's your host, Dr. Dan Critchett. Well, welcome and very glad to have you join us for this episode of Mercy Today Radio. Great, great stuff. You want to keep listening because we are telling the story of how compassion changes everything. We get to tell the world about the great work of Mercy, Inc., and its partners and friends and projects around the world, and we're going to get into that today. So, have you ever thought about going on a short-term mission trip? It might be a new thought, too. It might be a scary thought. It might be a past thought, but what that is is you um, leave home for a week or two or more, and you go to a foreign land, a different culture, different language. You usually go with a team, or you meet up with a team in another country, And you leave behind, here's the hard part, you leave behind all the comfort and convenience that you're so used to. And, uh, oh man, how am I going to get along without my microwave and my remote color TV and all that stuff? So the whole point of it, and that's what we're going to talk about today, is you are challenged to get outside of your comfort zone. And we love our little comfort zones, don't we? So as a pastor, I've known many people who have gone on mission trips, and most are wonderfully changed. When they come back, they're hardly the same person. They're excited. They're glad they went. And uh, they always say, well, we had some struggles or some things that didn't work out right, or I was a little nervous about this or that, unexpected things. But I have never... In 40 years as a pastor, I've never known anyone that was sorry they went. Their faith is made stronger, and some have made some lifelong friends. Still communicating across the, um, across the Internet or uh, various ways of communication, but it's been very, very rewarding. And that's what our show is about today, and it's called Expanding Your Comfort Zone Has Lifelong Benefits. So, friend, I want to welcome you to the discussion, invite you to lean in, open your heart, and listen to the end, because in the studio today is my good friend Katie Kalmbach. Katie and I have been uh, co-workers and friends for a number of years, and um, usually when I do a show, a person has a title or a position or something, and I'm just going to call Katie because of the topic we're going to talk about. Uh, Katie is is a friend and a mission tripper. How about that, Katie? How about that, Dan? Okay. So, <laughs> so today's episode, again, is uh, expanding your comfort zone has lifelong benefits. Katie, my good friend, um, uh, thank you for coming in today, and welcome to Mercy Today Radio. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and you've talked about your trips through the years as uh, we've known each other and worked together. And um, I'm excited about what God is doing because in my mind, and I think the other guys in the uh, studio will agree, you seem to be a pretty normal, average, typical working woman. You're working now, but you were a stay-at-home mom and raised mm-hmm. five kids and mm-hmm. just normal. Mm-hmm. And I want the normal people to be <laughs> listening today <laughs> and pick up on, on what you're saying. So thank you again. So let's uh, jump right into it, Katie. Okay. And uh, you and I have talked ahead of time about some good things that we'd like our people to hear. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I think it'd be good to know uh, you have not been on one or two trips. So how many and where? I've been on a total of eight uh, short-term mission trips, yeah, yeah. four to Uganda and four to Naples, Italy. Yeah. So Uganda might strike a little bit of uncertainty in people's ears. Yeah. And they might say, you know, all the bugs and the no running water and all that. But Naples, yeah, let's just go there. We're going to hang out on the veranda and yeah. sip wine and watch the uh, birds fly by. It's yeah. not quite that way, is it? No, not quite. And and I had heard that <laughs> remark uh, from people before. You're going on a mission trip to Italy. Right. Yeah, right, a right. mission trip to Italy. But it's so true because in Naples, um, it's it's very much needed like it is in, say, to Uganda. Yeah, the, or to the, Chicago. 
Yeah, or, right, so right. The the, the word of, of the Lord and and the love that that you show the people yeah. it's it's needed worldwide. And there's a specific um, event that you've gone for. We're going to listen to that a little bit later. But mm-hmm. uh, just the fact that here's here's Katie, mission tripper, mm-hmm. eight trips, uh, mm-hmm. Africa, uh, Uganda, and um, and Italy. And so let's uh, talk about this. And how would you? Summarize your mission trip experience, if you could, and you saw this question ahead of time, so you had time to think of it. Mm -hmm. What would that one word, if you could summarize it all into one word, what would it be? Rewarding. Wow. Okay. (laughs) Wow. So that's that's beautiful. And so I want people to... To, we're going to talk specifically about concerns and reluctance and so forth, but if something that you do is rewarding, then uh, there's likely going to be a cost, uh, mm-hmm. but it's going to be something that will uh, stay with you for a long, long time. In fact, um, as it says, getting out of your comfort zone has lifelong benefits. It's true. So have you thought about if you could, uh, I'm not sure I asked this ahead of time for you to think about it, if you could put a few more words together and, and make it a sentence. For your experience of eight mission trips. Well, uh, one sentence is kind of difficult, but I think I could uh, compact it into saying that I found out that I could actually do more than I thought I could do mm-hmm. on a mission trip because I'm not a pastor. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm just me. I'm yeah. just me. And um, there's so many things that, that, that you can accomplish just being a normal person going on these trips. Right. You and that's that's what I learned the most is that yes, stepping out of the comfort zone is not always comfortable or easy, but it is so rewarding and you find self-confidence. Yeah. You know that you're um, that you have contributed something. So that's what makes it rewarding Perfect. because you're blessed. I think a lot of people could be saying those exact words mm-hmm. and maybe they haven't gone yet. But they could say, I'm not a pastor, I'm just Mm -hmm. me. And I would say, the me is exactly who God wants to bring to a mission trip. Changes your life, would you say? Oh, absolutely. Yes, I realize that uh, uh, we take for granted the country in which we live. Indeed. And uh, especially that hit home, especially in Uganda, where uh, it is just so, so different from our lifestyle. So I found my biggest lesson there is that I can do without so many things that I thought I just needed. Right. Like shoes, right. for instance. The shoes I have on here, yeah. well, they're kind of starting to come apart on one side, but you know what? They work, and it's fine. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it does change your perspective. Yeah, about all kinds of things. All about, kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, perfect. I like that. So let's uh, rewind a little bit and go back to when you first uh, heard about or were invited to or got information about a trip. What was it that caused you to want? What was what was the, your motivation or what struck uh, for you when you wanted to go on that first trip? Well, back in 2007, the pastor from um, uh, Christian Life Ministries in Kampala, Uganda, came to speak at our church, Abundant Life um, Church out in Happy Valley, Oregon. And uh, he spoke, and he was showing pictures of, uh, of his vision for what he saw in uh, increasing uh, the church in Uganda. And there was a sports stadium, and he had that picture up there. And his vision was to plant so many churches and grow so many Christians so he could fill up that sports stadium. And he said, please, come and help me build my church. And I just had that tug in my heart. Tug. It's a good word, yeah. 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 Still gets you, doesn't it? It does. Because yeah. you remember. Uh, mm-hmm. One thing I want to mention there is it uh, that vision, his vision, vision his is vision. compelling. Vision is magnetic. It's not let's, you know, let's just go and see what happens. I mean, it is a specific vision, and it was a big vision. Mm-hmm. And that uh, that's what God used to get your attention and to uh, drag you out of your comfort zone to go to <laughs> and off go to I Africa. Went. Off you went. Wow, excellent. Um, so, your expectation or what you would hoped that you would experience or what would happen did that come true for you? Um, yes. Um, <sighs> Honestly, when when I first went, I didn't know what to expect. 
because who you've never done something before, you don't know. Uh, we had very, very good in-depth training, so that helped to create some mm-hmm. expectations. But once once you get there, you really see what you are doing and what the situation is and how you can help. And uh, so, yeah, the um, uh, my reasons were totally fulfilled. The people were so loving, both in Uganda and in Italy, and tons of lifelong friendships have been built yeah. from that. Yeah. So you'd say your expectations were fulfilled, and then some. And then like some, over, absolutely. Overflowing. So, Katie, I want to ask you, right after the break, um, any barriers or reluctance that popped up or emerged in your process of uh, deciding to go and then the fundraising and all of that stuff. So right after the break, so don't go away, folks. Okay. We will be right back. I'm Brad Swinford with Salem Concrete Paving. It's a privilege to partner with Mercy, Inc., who provides hope to people around the world by meeting critical needs and introducing people to Jesus. I know that through Mercy, Inc., I'm investing in God's kingdom as they spread the love and gospel of Christ around the world. So please join me in supporting Mercy, Inc. and Mercy Today Radio by praying or going to their website at mercytoday.global. Thank you. This is Doug Hoffman, the Executive Director for Mercy, Inc. Today I want to take you inside a brothel in South Asia. And we're coming alongside the women within that brothel because of COVID, it's all shut down. But in particular, we're about the children that are a result of the brothel. These children, at no fault of their own, are there. They're kind of stuck within it. They're not being fed. They're going hungry. They're walking in in water, and, and the conditions are horrible in that respect. But Mercy, Inc. is coming alongside. We'll help provide food back to those children. We're providing three meals a day for them. And for $25 for two weeks, we can provide food for them of rice and lentils, in particular basic food. But also with that, then we're also providing some spiritual awareness and building that relationship with those children, with the mother to make a difference in their lives for eternity. Thank you. Now's the time to become a part of something greater in our community. You and your organization can partner with Mercy Today and change the lives of thousands around the world. Our team of business professionals can also come alongside you and help you grow your organization to maximize your impact. Our goal is to help you increase your quadruple bottom line, people, planet, profit, and purpose. Consider being a sponsor of Mercy Today. Visit our website at mercytoday.global. And welcome back. We are talking to Katie Kalmbach. She is my friend. She's a co-worker, and I call her a mission tripper. Eight trips on short-term mission trips to Uganda and Italy. We're going to get a little bit more detail about each of those uh, in a couple of minutes here. And the theme for today, for this episode, is expanding your comfort zone has lifelong benefits. And I want you to be thinking, listener, about what that might mean, because if you have a comfort zone that you're pretty attached to, and that's the American way we kind of all do, but think about the, uh, the, uh, the payoff here or the weighing. Expanding your comfort zone has lifelong benefits. And uh, Katie said in the earlier uh, portion, uh, one word to describe her mission trips is the word rewarding. So anybody that wants to have a rewarding time, a rewarding experience, listen to the rest of this with Katie, and I'm going to ask her some questions about her trip. So tune in, listen up. Now, everybody who gets the thought about going on a mission trip has a little bit of, uh, whoa, now wait a minute, you know, barriers and reluctance, I would call them. So, Katie, tell us uh, some of the things that, that entered into your mind after yeah. you said, yeah, I'll go. And it's a bit of a journey even just to get there, right? I mean, to get to where you're getting onto the plane, you know, raising the money and all that stuff. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. What were some of those for you? Well, my my biggest barrier started um, in my early Christian uh, times. Um, I became a Christian in 1980. And so I, you know, got excited, oh, you know, mission trips, and I'm going, oh, wait, that's kind of scary because I don't know the Bible and I don't know the verses. And, and so um, then as it, as it progressed 
And then after I listened to um, Jackson and decided, yes, I need to follow that tug in my heart that mm -hmm. was given to me by God yeah. to do this. So the barriers that came up at that time was, there again, fear of the unknown, because where am I going? What am I doing? Uh, safety, health issues, uh, what can I contribute? All those disappeared. Absolutely, they will go away, you guys. Really? Absolutely, they, 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 they will go away. Um, we had, if, if you're going to go on a mission trip, I would strongly suggest you get with a good group and you have good preparation training. That will uh, set you up in learning about the culture difference because when you go to a third world country, oh yes, there's culture shock and you need to be prepared for that, what that is. Mm, right. So, um, but th those barriers, they're natural. Don't think that you're some weirdo for being frightened or having anxiety about what you don't know, because that's how we are. We're human. But uh, trust me, they will go away, and you will do just fine on a mission trip. Excellent. Well said. So anybody who's thinking, well, I do have reluctance, I'm afraid of some things or doubtful about some things, so you guarantee, Katie, Katie, those things will go away. Absolutely. And another fear I had was how in the world am I going to pay for this? Yeah. Because it's, you know, I didn't have a lot of money. And um, so there are, um, uh, if you're in with a good mission team, you will have a fundraiser. We did a bowl a thon a couple of times mm. and raised money that way. So we have fun in raising the money. You have a garage sale and you raise money. You send letters of support out to people and people will send what they can. If 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 a hundred people sent twenty dollars in, you you know that's that's a nice chunk of of your uh, of your trip expense, and so. Uh, just know that if if you are, if God wants you to go, he'll get you there. There you go. Well said. I'll put that in quotes. <laughs> so let's go to Italy. Uh, mm -hmm. That wasn't your first, because you went to Uganda first, but I want to hear mm -hmm. about Italy. And Italy, um, yes. what was the mission, Who and what did you do there? Uh, in Italy, we went to Naples and the surrounding area of Naples. Naples is a beautiful, beautiful town. It's at the base of Mount Vesuvius. Of any of you history buffs know what happened um, when the mountain blew up. But the people are um, they're struggling. Uh, the Camorra, which is the Italian one of the Italian mafias, is very heavy in that area. Um, the church over there is uh, led by Doug and Dee Valenzuela. They are from, from Portland, and they've mm -hmm. been over there 30, uh, maybe 40 years by now. I don't know. Time goes by so fast. And they have stuck it out, and now they are accepted by everyone over okay. there, the, the locals and the um, – the mafia, and they have an if event I can there say that. that you go for. And they have an event there yeah. to help build up their church and to reach out to people. So here is the here's how it the scenario. Most of the people they live in in apartment buildings there. So Doug has uh, uh, created a festival. It's called When Italy Meets the West because Italians love cowboys and the West. Mm. And so the festival has many, many booths that are designed with a Western theme. One booth is a calf roping. It's not a real calf, but, you know, you can rope. Uh, there are puppets. There are um, cooking. Uh, there's a cooking booth. There's a picture booth so they can get in costume. Uh, there's all sorts of things. Then at 8 o'clock at night, we roll it all up, close it up, and uh uh, Pastor Doug will do an altar call, a, a sermon and an altar call. It's beautiful how, how they do it. And the, the nice thing is that where these are located, in a park or in a school parking lot where the apartment buildings are surrounding, yeah, everybody yeah. hears they what hear Doug is saying. So you don't have to be at the festival. And the the festival is free for everyone, and they're very family-oriented people there. They would come to the festival and say, well, how much to take this picture? How much is it? It's free. Free. And so that just by, just by being there and being kind and showing the love of Jesus to these people, 
that speaks volumes in itself. So all of you people out there, if you're not a Bible student or a pastor, you can show some love. I know you can, and you can you can do it on these mission trips. She's pointing to you listeners and looking at the microphone, <laughs> very intent. So what, what, who were these people? Did you say that they were kind of the low-income uh, people in that in that region or yes okay mm -hmm. yes so anything free is going to be and, anything free they, they, and the they cowboys will do. and the cowboys the West they love it you know spaghetti yeah. westerns there you go there you go <laughs> and I will say too that about uh, about these uh, these mission trips um, Italy was not as physical as Uganda was mm -hmm. of course we didn't all. We weren't constantly doing physical things in Uganda, VBS for the kids, Bible studies for the mums and crafts and things like that. But you also get a bonus, and that bonus is on a weekend day, you can take a day trip and you can go and see the sights. I've been to the source of the Nile River on oh, Lake Victoria, wow. and not everybody yeah. can do has yeah. has been able to do that. Yeah. But you you can take a break because if the team leaders know that you can't work, 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 work in right. a situation that right. is not familiar to you. So there 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 are break days. Mm -hmm. So you get to see some of the outside culture from what you're from where you're working. And um, yeah, so so let's go back to Italy for a minute. Mm -hmm. and I'm just thinking for a relational person, which you are, mm -hmm. uh, when you strike up a conversation and it moves into more, like a connection, you're saying, I, I like this, you know, and that person looks like they like you and you have a conversation and does that and that builds into a relationship. And I'm imagining that uh, if you've been there four years, some of the same people will be there. And so you're kind of rebonding, reconnecting, and that's very rewarding. There's oh, that word absolutely. again. Absolutely. They are yeah. so happy to see you again and hugs and kisses and yes, it's it's amazing. They they will bring Treats to the booth during the festival time, um, which is different from from Uganda. What you get there are um, just more hugs and love from mm -hmm. from the women. Uh, they will teach you their tribal dances. That's a fun one to do. Oh, wow. um, I have sat on yeah. the porches of the of the homes and and cleaned beans with them, and you know you just you just interact yeah. and. Uh, some of these people, especially in Uganda, there has been such, such horrible things that these people have had to live through. Yeah. And uh, uh, you, you're just there. You're just there. You just love. And you listen. And it sounds like some of those are certainly not high-skilled things. You just get in, go with the flow. That's and you're exactly cleaning beans it. or you're hauling bricks or something. That's right. So anybody could go, whatever they Anybody they're... can go. Yeah, that's important. So when somebody thinks about uh, some barriers or some um, uncertainties, that I want you folks to listen to what Katie is saying. And she went not thinking that she had a whole lot of skills, but her personality and her just her humanness and everything came out and made a big, big impact and some long term friends. We're mm -hmm. going to um, move along here because uh, we do have a time. Limitation coming up, but we're going to, um, after we finish the radio timed portion, Katie, if you can stay a little bit longer, we'll do what we call the afterwards. Is there anything more about Uganda uh, uh, that you could bring out? I mean, we talked about um, the school, talked about uh, the brick brigade and meeting the people. And what else would you like us to know about well, maybe, going maybe to Uganda? Maybe I should say um, to your listeners that uh, what we did in Uganda was uh, go to an orphanage that is sponsored by Christian Life Ministries okay. over there. Yeah. It started out with around 85 orphans, and mm -hmm. there are many, many orphans in in uh, Uganda due to disease, malaria, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, at last count, it was well over a thousand, and so that's that was our uh, our job to do was go to the uh, 
go to the orphanage and we th- we being the team not not just me but the team we have installed electricity we've installed a 280 foot well so they have clear water we have built a community center uh, with indoor cooking for the uh, the cooks to be able to cook all the food for all of the kids and the smoke is vented up and out of the building so they don't have to breathe it it sounds like a lot of practical things you know if you want to teach or help in in a learning or discipling or Bible school kind of a thing, you can do that. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who's been thinking about, maybe had that nudge, kind of like what you experienced, what would you say to them right now? Go. (laughs) <laughs> that's simple. <laughs> that's simple. Yeah, God will take care of go. the rest. Yes, find find a, a good team and go. Wow. Okay, so I, I'm hoping that uh, all of you listeners are thinking about, maybe you've been on a mission trip, and uh, maybe you can let us know your experience. Go to our website, mercytoday.global, and um, ask for more information or tell us what you did. We'll be back with more Mercy Today right after this. How do you multiply your time, talent, and treasures? By investing in Mercy Today. Whether it's going on a mission outreach halfway around the world or sharing your insights and experiences with others in our local community, our team of business professionals can help you multiply what God has given you. We can help you grow your organization so that you and your fellow work associates can utilize your talents for even greater causes as you multiply your resources to do even more. Join us and become a sponsor of Mercy Today. Visit our website at mercytoday.global. Have you been looking for new ways to grow your organization and have a lasting, eternal impact? Mercy Today has an amazing team of business professionals that have managed small businesses to large corporations, and we want to share that know-how and experience with you. We're also committed our lives to sharing the gospel with compassion and serving the practical needs of communities around the world. Partner with us and become a sponsor of Mercy Today. Visit our website at mercytoday.global. This is Doug Hoffman, Executive Director for Mercy, Inc., just thanking you for listening to mercytoday.global. If you have questions about today's topic or about Katie, our guest, we'd love to have you go to our website at mercytoday.global. And there up on the top, you'll find a Contact Us form. Just click on that and let us know what's on your mind. We'd love to send you more information. If you have any thought about a short-term mission trip, we'd love to tell you more. We're not traveling at this moment because of COVID, but we are making a list. And we're going to stay in touch with those who do want to go and who feel that call. Feel that nudge because you can go and get that reward that Katie was talking about. Go to that contact page at mercytoday.global and I'd love to have you there. Thank you for listening today. This is Mercy Today Radio, telling the story of how compassion changes everything. I'm your host, Dr. Dan Critchett, wrapping up this episode. And until next time, may God help you be a part of what He is doing in our world. God bless you. We are back, and this is the afterwards portion. If we um, get to talking on the main part of our radio-timed broadcast, and uh, there's always some more things we want to we want to bring up, some a uh, couple of new topics, or to finish up on some things that we have talked about already. Katie is still here in the studio, and we're going to have a a little bit of afterwards here. So, Katie, um, tell me this: you went on your first trip, you overcame a lot of the reluctance, and you went through all the things to raise the money and to get your shots if you needed them Mm -hmm. and get your passport and all that stuff that you have to do. That's part of the process. You went and you had a great experience, even with, you know, some challenges. The question is, why did you go back? Because you've been eight times, and so let's go back to that first one. You finished the first one. You came back, and you had the opportunity again. What was it that motivated you? Why did you go back? Because part of your heart will be Mm. in the area where you serve and you you build up relationships with the people in uganda it was the mums the mums are hired to take care of the orphans so there are uh, between 10 to 15 orphans per mum's house oh really Mm -hmm. oh my yeah yeah 
So that's that's why you you get to know the people, you see what is happening, and you you want to go back. Mm. It's just how it is. Same thing with Italy. You you build up the relationships. It's the relationships. It's yeah. the relationships, yeah. and and you go you go back. Yeah, I wonder if you ever had a thought of well, I if I don't go back, then I'm leaving some relationships there. You know, I have have a good friend, made good connections, and I won't see him again if I don't go back. So you've been doing that so <laughs> eight different times. So you mentioned, uh, let's see, you mentioned a kid by the name of Mark. Mm-hmm. Tell us about him. Little Mark Bukenya, sweetest little fella. The first, the first time I got there, I got off the bus, and the people that had been there before, they, whooshed, you know, they went to, because they, they knew where to go. This was my first time, so I'm kind of going, oh, what do I do here at mm. the orphanage? So I just started walking around, and I found this little boy, and it was instant. We just loved each other. Mm-hmm. It was just instantaneous. When I met him. He was, I think, I think he was about five, five or six. He didn't speak very much English at all. He had one flip flop on one foot and nothing on the other foot. And we just got along, and I would be standing, he would run off and go do something, and then I would be doing something, and I would feel this little hand come up and mm. come into my hand. Yeah. And I'd look down, I'd say, Oh, there you are, Mark. Mm. Wow. And so That's each each year I went back, Mark would be there, and I would take him um, trail mix and some um, you know little candies, and I would bag them up. And every day that I left, when we left the orphanage, he would be there at the bus, and I would give him his packet, and he called them num nums. <laughs> he wanted his num nums. Wow. So I, I don't know. I've kind of lost track of what happened uh, to Mark. Um, uh, so I, I don't know. But, yes, there, I have a picture of him sitting on my lap at, with his head against my chest, and he's sound asleep. Mm. So that, yeah. that motherly love sure, that they yeah, don't yeah. always get, right. they, we all crave that. So that's what you people can do out there. You can go hug and love on those kids. And that's powerful. You don't need a skill. You just no. need an openness and a heart. And mm-hmm. I think everybody that I've talked to that has been on a mission trip, and I've been on a couple, uh, and it's true for when my kids, I mean, there, there's a, I guess I would call it a bonding. Mm-hmm. You don't know who it's going to be or mm-hmm. when or where it's going to happen, but there's just But you know it when a, it's there. You know, yeah, and it's a connection, and that's really, really mm-hmm. precious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, I have another another fellow in Uganda named Bill, and he would call me mom. And uh, we were coming back from one of our day trips, and I have curly hair. You guys, you can't see it, but I have curly hair. I do not own a brush. If I brushed my hair, it would go whoop oh. and just be out. So Bill noticed that, you know, the bus, the window was open, so my hair was kind of messy. I can't see it, so it doesn't bother me. And he says, Mom, do you have do you have a brush to fix your hair? I said, no, Bill, I, I, I don't have a brush, meaning I don't want a brush. I don't need a brush. Well, we stopped at a store for some snacks. What does Bill get me? Uh-huh. He gets me a hair pick. <coughs> and he s- brings it to me, and he said, here, Mom, this is for you. Wow. And that's one of my yeah. treasures. Oh, yes. You still have it. I still is have it. On it. a shelf in your house? Or? It, it's in one of my drawers. Oh, uh, perfect. And, but for him to spend his money, and these people don't have very much money. Yeah, yeah. For him to spend his money on yeah. me that day. Precious. Yeah. Yeah, that's yep. a connection. And that'll show up in all kinds of different ways. Our listener, uh, if you're feeling the tug, you know, get to our website Tell us you'd like to go. We'll find a place for you to go when the time is right, and we'll walk you through everything. Uh, Katie, you said something about the thrill that you had of baptizing some of the kids that mm-hmm. uh, that you were there with. Tell us about that. Mm-hmm. Yes, in Uganda, every day that we were there, we had VBS for the kids. Yeah. 
And so then at the end of our uh, time there, all those kids that, that wanted to, that had accepted Jesus as their Savior, they were brought to the hotel where we were. And, and this is not a fancy hotel. It's a, on, you know, it's just bare basic, but they did have a pool in the back and a smaller pool for the, for the younger children. So they, um, the children were, were brought to uh, the hotel. And we had a station set up where we served them by washing their feet, mm. as Jesus did. And that was amazing to them. Also, the moms, we washed their feet, took care of them, and then we led them around in line, and they waited their turn to get in the pool mm. to be baptized. Yeah. And I was able to jump in and uh, do quite a few. And it was, it was an amazing, amazing time. Yeah, I've heard that from others too who have gone. Uh, we didn't have water. I was in uh, Mexico, and uh, building houses uh, for families. But uh, what a great experience! Yeah, mm -hmm. fantastic. Absolutely, I, I will never ever forget it. Never. So one last question, Katie. You ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in fact, Doug Hoffman, the executive director of Mercy Inc., is in the studio with us, and he suggested this question for you. Uh, after going on those trips and all those relationships and all the difficulties and challenges and rewards and everything else, what is different in your life now with that kind of short-term mission trip experience? Well, it's kind of a difficult question to put everything into a short summary. Sure. I think primarily it would be that I am satisfied with with what God has given me. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, I don't have a lot of money, but God provided the money for me to go, and He continues to provide the money for me to stay in my house and to drive my car and to buy my food and keeps my job going. And that's, I think, the, the main, the biggest thing that I learned is that yes you god does take care of us he takes care of those orphans in uganda he takes care of those families that are struggling in naples he does provide and i think that is is my biggest takeaway from that i don't need what i think i need because god gives me what i need yeah and he's changed your desires i mean that's the promise you know um, because when we start thinking the way God thinks and having the same desires that He wants for us, it the world takes on a whole different look. I'm thinking of the song that says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim. <laughs> I love that, in the light of His glory and grace. That song has been in my mind for three days. Has it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did we talk about that on the... Nope. No? Okay, well, it's... <laughs> Spirit, it's a God uh, thing. That to, it's a God thing. It's absolutely. a God thing. Yeah. So there's so much there, and uh, I'm uh, just encouraging people who are listening to just be open, just listen for God's voice, look for an opportunity. Um, I want you to step forward, but I want you to know that God is calling many of you to uh, to pack up, to pick up, and to step up and get on that plane and go. There's a process, there's training, and there's orientation and all that stuff. And so it is a fantastic, and I think it would say you'll never be the same. In fact, the mm. title for today's episode is Expanding Your Comfort Zone Has Lifelong Benefits. Absolutely. So, Katie, Amen. one last time, speak directly to our listeners so if they were sitting in front of you and you had the odd, you you know you had the microphone and you're talking to them just do that right now speak to them I would say please go if you feel that urge from God go he will provide for you to get there if you are physically unable to go then reach out ask God to show you who you can help support to get there because it does cost money and it is a sacrifice for people that go because you leave your home you're leaving your job and uh, it, it does it is a sacrifice for people to go so help help those people but most of all, if, if, you, if you have the urge to go, please, please go. The, um, the thing that um, 
uh, that stands out to me when we were both in Uganda and Italy, people would say, oh, thank you for coming. You have blessed us. You have blessed us. But in reality, when you think about it, <laughs> no, 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 they blessed us. Yeah. And that can happen to you. And if you want to feel that blessing, then please sign up and go. Go. You can do it. If I could do it, you could do it. Well, that's persuasive. One last question <laughs> off the record here. So if somebody says, I'd like to talk to Katie, um, can they do that? Can I, uh, I won't give you a phone number, but they can contact us at Mercy Today mm -hmm. and uh, see if they, if they can get a hold of you. We'll give out your phone number. We'll sure, you of course. And everything. Yeah. Absolutely. So Katie is very excited about anybody who will go and maybe go on a trip with her. So, yeah, I'm kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you are a lot of fun, Katie. I've known you for years. So that's it for today. This is the afterwards portion. And go to our website, mercytoday.global. We're kind of in transition. We're putting more stuff up there. Uh, sign up for the podcast. These are the kinds of things you'll hear on a regular basis. We're all around the world, different kinds of people, different roles, and all of that. So Join us again on the show. Find out where in the world we'll be going next. Find all of our shows uh, and a whole lot more at mercytoday.global. Thank you. God bless you, my friend. Until next time, we'll see you. <laughs>